Phoenix Home Care and Hospice. I choose Phoenix. So my name is Grace Shee, and when I was four years old, um, almost four years old, I was diagnosed with rhabdomyosarcoma, which is a soft tissue tumor um, and a childhood cancer. It was in my right sinuses, uh, maxillary sinus, and it had fingers behind my eyes and across and uh, clear across my face. So the only option was to do full face radiation and then start chemotherapy. We did chemo for almost just over two years and um, at that point it was a lot of experimental treatments because there were very few others who had ever survived or if they survived rhabdomyosarcoma um, it would always come back and so there were lots of experimental treatments and in July of 1996, I was still doing chemo and they did their regular scans and it showed more growth. So they said that they could continue with experimental treatment and do chemo for comfort, which my dad says, uh, those two words don't belong together in the same sentence. So they asked me as a, I was almost six years old, they asked me as a six-year-old what I wanted, and then I said I wanted hair. Um, I specifically remember a time when we were going into Dylan's with my grandma, and I was in the shopping cart, and another little kid said, Mommy, why does that girl, why does that boy have pink on? And I said, uh, it's just one of those memories I have where it was frustrating. It's like, I'm, I'm not a little boy, I'm a girl, can't you tell? <laughs> um, but I was bald and lost all my hair right off the bat um, with some of the first treatments. And it's, I didn't mind it, I didn't let it bother me, but it was something that I wanted. Um, I wanted to have hair and be a little girl. My parents didn't hide things from me, but there were things that as a six-year-old you don't necessarily need to know. Um, I definitely knew what was going on and they were always very open about the treatments, the scans, and like requirements, you know, that hold still or uh, we'll have to do this over and over instead of just one time. Um, so there were there were things that I didn't need to know though and it was years later that I found out about little uh, plans and things that my extended family was involved in and some of those things. I was probably a 14, um, maybe 12, when we were at, as a family, we were at Cowtown, um, Old Cowtown Museum, and we were walking around exploring, and my dad and I were in the little chapel, and there's a, it's like their little mortuary, and he told me at that point that they had chosen a casket, like half the size of the little children's casket that um, was on display there. And that, that just really hit me as a teenager that they had had to plan for things like that. And then um, the, at the time that we quit chemo, the life expectancy that the doctors gave my parents was single digits. And I had heard that all along um, as they would share my story with people. But it wasn't until I was probably 18 or even 20 that I realized it was either three or four percent um, chance of, of survival. 
and that was July 1996. And so this July, I am celebrating 25 years off chemo. This year probably has been one of the biggest years where I've realized that it was, it, my life is truly a miracle from God. Um, there, there was no hope without him. And that hope and comfort that the Lord gives and family and friends do is one of the things that I really enjoy about Phoenix. There's hope and comfort in times of um, in times of loss and struggles and difficulties. It has always just been a part of my life. It wasn't something I chose <laughs> um, to have cancer, and so it's just been a part of my life and who I am. Um, it's given me strength and knowing the number of people that supported my family uh, through it all. I was, I'm the oldest of five kids and my my family definitely didn't spoil me because of what I was going through. They made sure to take care of everyone else and that camaraderie and group um, care is still important to me today. I started with Phoenix in May of 2020, right after COVID started um, with kind of major in Wichita. And I, so I've been with the company for just about a, just over a year. And I am the bereavement coordinator administrative assistant, which I find exciting. Uh, there isn't another bereavement coordinator administrative assistant in our company um, because we are so much different than the other sites. We're all unique. And we have a large number of Wesley Hospital patients that are general inpatient um, hospice patients. And we have a lot of those family members that we are blessed to serve through a bereavement program. I love working for Phoenix. It's encouraging to know that there's a team spirit within the company and without each other, our jobs would be impossible. <laughs> um, and that's been a big part of my whole life um, with my family, we have a large family and that's just how we function. Knowing that through my work um, right now, I am impacting over 1,000 people in the letters that we're sending out and the phone calls that I help schedule and the visits and um, funeral attendance that our team is uh, dedicated to, to make. Um, and I know that that compounds because there's a thousand people on our list, but they all have families of their own. Favorite memory would probably be more recent. Um, well, two of them. First one would be our celebration when we broke our record of our hospice um, census, and we hit. Uh, we celebrated having a hundred clients, and the more recent one would be um, just our time of fellowship at uh, Chicken and Pickles where we were all able to gather as family and friends and play games and visit. I am thankful for the services that we offer that a lot of people don't think of as traditional hospice. Um, one of those being our general inpatient services uh, where we can come along with families that are in the hospital and are facing uh, terminal prognosis and be there to comfort the family. Um, we spent a lot of time in the hospital over the two years and 
uh, lots of time on the road to and we see a lot of patients at Wesley Hospital that are from Western Kansas, which is where my family was and I were living when I was diagnosed. Um, so it's, I am grateful for that opportunity and um, I also am thankful for the opportunity that we have with pediatric hospice and just realizing that that could have been me and uh, just pediatric hospice you still have the option to seek aggressive treatment um, even though the prognosis are um, not good but there's always the chance of um, beating the odds and God may have other plans. And with Phoenix, we're there to serve and help along the way, um, no, matter, no matter what the situation may, uh, how, it, how it may turn out. Phoenix Home Care and Hospice, I choose Phoenix.